formulé. Oui, je vais, je vais te le donner. So it's my great pleasure to welcome Linda and Alain here, with all of those chairs. Yes, thank you. Um, I will say that Linda Hayford is uh, a dancer, choreographer, also co-director with the Collective Fair of the CCN in Rennes, and that Alain Hurricane Lotur is um, a hip-hop dance artist hailing from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and based here in New York City. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> ah, hi, Linda. Hi, Ellen. Yeah, How are you? Very good. Good. Yeah. Um, there was a great conversation here just now, you know, and I think I'm going to share my journey with you, and I think it'll answer a lot of questions you have and a lot of curiosity you have, you know? Um, there's a big thing about access here that we don't have, especially deeply in the black community. You know, even if we see that access, we're not welcome to it. It's not that we cannot do it, we're just not welcome to it. So there's never a time we think we cannot do it. It is just that we are not welcome to it. You know, so there's a big difference in that, that I don't think this experience, other people can experience that. So this is an experience that we can't really express, you know, because it's not gonna be understood. And I hope the way that I just say it is helping it to be understood at this moment. So when I share with you my journey, you can understand that also even without the access, my way will still be what I would like it to be. And so I think academia don't have space for that, you know? Because sometimes there's a way that is put in academia, also dance schools, it force everyone to think this way is the only way, you know? And it's almost enforced. So there's some people that don't even, when they don't have access to this academia, they have the passion and they still go for it, you know? And, and the way that they go for it build many pathways that no one else knows exist, if that makes sense, you know? So when we try to structure something, especially art, it keeps it at a one place, in a one way, when art doesn't even mean that in the first place, if that makes sense, you know? And so my journey is I love dance, you know? Maybe I didn't know a particular style because sometimes because of the, this is better than this, or this is more palatable, if that's the word, than this, or this is professional and this is not. So the value of certain art forms is diminished, you know? Because maybe it can look like it's something trendy with no value because sometimes things aren't taken as seriously as other things. So it's the way art forms aren't taken seriously as other art forms, you know? So. Since I love this art form, I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> and even though it doesn't have any representative within the art form, yes, I see some people in those other art forms that looks like me, and I appreciate them to the fullest for going for that path also because they love that art form. I do too. I love art but there's a particular art that I gravitate to, you know, and that also should be honored. And it helps me also be open to see other arts, 
And so most of the people in my world, street dance, hip hop, locking, popping, voguing, whacking, and many others flexing, a lot of other styles that exist within the black community, you know, it's not valued as much. But I understand the discipline of these things. They come with their own discipline. They come with their own specific techniques. The difference in black form is that, <laughs> I'm gonna have to speak in a very artistic way. <laughs> um, the art is the form and the movement are just structure, if that makes sense. So the art is able to construct, reconstruct, deconstruct. And even if that there is a form, the form can still remain within the art, you know? So that makes our dances a little bit more what we call free. So it can sometimes look like there is no form. But when you are raised in a particular culture, you understand what that form is. So, and that culture has never been in academia because it's never been valued to be in academia. So it is not understood, you know? So when we are speaking of bringing the people that live these cultures to teach it, to perform it, to show it, so you can truly experience this thing and at, and at its highest form, you know? Because even the highest form of it is not known because it's so unfamiliar. That's why there is no eye for when someone is a beginner or not. Like if I'm watching ballet, I right away know when someone is a beginner. When I'm watching someone that's not a beginner, I know because it's represented so well and so carefully as well. And it's protected, but our art form doesn't have those access to be in that way. So when we are invited, sometimes maybe it's hard to find the right and correct people to invite because if it all looked the same, then there is no knowing, you know? Because if you don't understand something, it's gonna all look exactly the same for you, you know? And for me, in a way to be able to find these particular people, this, including Tatiana, this happening here is a long journey for us. We just kept going. You know what I mean? Because we believe in it so much, because we also know, because we appreciate all other art forms and we l are living our art form because we love the art, period. So because we love the art, period, it helps us to see other art forms and appreciate it, you know? But I don't think we are ever put in that consideration of art form, you know? We are mostly put in the consideration of pretty, nice, cool, you know? And so even I've seen the contemporary world, even the ballet world, is using a lot of our movement that really increase their value, increase their level as well. But it's, it's still, so okay, you see us, you see something, but it's still not valued, you know? So I think it's important to, if you see us, come to us as well, so you can really find what it is because our culture doesn't just come with an a way it comes with a lifestyle which is not something that you can really put in academia like a lot of conservatories have tried it but have failed because they follow the system that is for a ballet for a contemporary for something you know and they've also tried Okay, let's say you go to parties, you're gonna see what it is. No, it's so much more than just going to one party. It's so much more than just seeing it in front of a mirror. It's so much more than repetition, you know? It's, it's a lived experience which leaves a little bit more room for experience and freedom, you know? And so 
I'm trying to be very careful with my words. <laughs> and so when we are just saying, come here, there's like no understanding really what we are bringing, you know? So if we say, I want this here, let me go see what it is. So then when I bring it here, I already have an idea, even though I don't even know what it is yet. You know, I have a, there's a familiarity, there's an idea, and when it comes to, like, I love the knowing what you, we don't know bit of the conversation. It's a lot of, I choose what I don't know. When what I could know is right here, you know? So for me, through my journey, I'm learning all of this, you know? I had to make my own way. And what I've accepted sometimes, I'll say sometimes, because I'm not for it, but I've accepted it, is that um, a certain popularity or a certain name will get you to be valued. So then I'm like, got you. I'm going to work for that. But that's not my value. You understand? So a lot of dancers that can be in a certain caliber are taught a certain value that stray them away from their thing that they truly want to do, in a way, and how are we going to protect that in an academia setting, you know, so they can actually do the thing. And the thing about dance and movement, because you practice your movement, your, it is possible to start taking on other movement because now you're understanding body language, you know, and that's what choreography is. Choreography is not a style, you know. It's just a collective movement. But because we all train a certain way, we can kind of execute those movements, you know? But street dance has such specificity to it, we can see when something is being kind of done or something like, if I'm, I'm a hip hop dancer and I do choreography and I put a certain ballet movement in it, but I'm not a ballet trainee, a ballet dancer is going to be like, you know, what is that? And it's also disrespectful. But when it comes to street dance, that is easily done. Something that's not values is actually valued because I'm putting it in the thing that I think is more valuable, you know? But why do I need that if this is not valuable? You understand? So. And my journey, I got to, okay, let me train in a way that I can execute some movement that are not my form a certain way, you know? Like, one thing about street dance, even if I was teaching, I would, I am teaching, uh, if I was teaching in academia, the first thing I would say, we don't, we don't restrict your body. This is street dance. Like every other dance have a kind of restriction to a particular body, you know? And street dance, we know the form, which is the art, right? So it enables you to dance any form of street dance because it's not restricted to your body. Like a lot of my ballet dancer friends that ballet, the way that ballet is taught is not for their body. And street dancers, we come, like, we are so <laughs> educated in the body because we, we are finding ourselves through these movements that we understand that, oh, not everyone's body is similar at all. So you actually destroy your body when you try to do something that your body's not even capable because it's not formed in this way, you know? And so... There's certain values in street dance that are so important that are not put up front. And that's why like certain ways are just not for us because it's not here, because there's no representative actually for us. So it, it can't be created unless we have proper representation. You know, it's not just because this has already happened 
I'm black, I'm here, which is great, and it's gonna keep happening. But there's absolutely no representation for something else, and it can both coexist, and all the art form can also coexist together, and it also give room for other art forms that we still have to be welcomed, you know? It's like, should we pick and choose the art forms or should we allow ourselves to be open to all of it and its culture, you know? Because like street dance have a culture which is not only bought, it cannot really be bought just in the studio. It also has to be experienced and lived, you know, because that's the core of it all. And how can we encourage, encourage students to go and do that? You know, we can't take that away from it because that's the magic of it all, you know? So <laughs> my journey, being a street dancer, also keeping myself as a choreographic memory dancer, you know, and then daring to go in certain places to show my dance, like it has happened for her, it has happened for Tatiana, and in the Europe world, they're more welcome to street dance now than here. Here, this is new. You know, I just came from developing a soul train on Broadway, which is 90% street dance you know, and it's the first of its kind for the first time in 2023, you understand? And it's just like, even our stories don't even matter, or it's not important enough to be on a Broadway stage, or it's not important enough to be in a concert stage, you know, Bec also our art form is not important enough to be on those spaces. It's gonna, it's, in the space for the first time in 2023, you know? And there's many Broadway shows like Hamilton that uses these art forms, but there's no one of me in it. And yes, they have black people all over Hamilton, but it's the ones that doesn't have the educations and this art form that they're doing. It's like, they're black, yay, but do they understand and know do, do you understand? We have to have the proper representation, not just representation, and they both can coexist, you know? And that means for everywhere, the schools, the shows, the, the spaces that are there. And I'll let you go, Lena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. There was so many things <laughs> that you opened up that I forgot now. Um, but I will start with what comes in my mind now about also the representations and how different it can be here in the US and in Europe and in France also because as we said before there are political economical questions that gives the opportunity for dancers artists to project themselves uh, one of the questions that i've been thinking to myself for many years now um, in the u.s is how come the culture that I've been growing up with in France because I was born and raised in France. Both my parents are from Ghana. So it, they're, they were really influenced by American um, influence, music, uh, lifestyle, whatever. So in my house, apartment, it was pretty much America, <laughs> you know? Not my neighbor, my house. So, um, when I started to go in studios, and I'm not from academic, I didn't learn in school dance, anything like that. It brought me something else to say afterwards, but um, yeah, 
growing up in this, meeting it in studios where people were practicing what was called hip hop, blocking, popping, whatever, in music, like funk music, stuff like that, that for us was our parents that were listening to this and we were listening to New Jack or whatever, my brother and I, my brothers and sisters and I, uh, which was not the music in school or in my other friends' houses. So there was already like, you know, something that was uh, décalé. No. Um, but going to the studio where people were actually practicing in this world and starting to go to battles, to events, to see, to meet like the pioneers that come from America because France has a huge respect for pioneers. So the, the pioneers that were famous here was the first one invited in France to all the big international events so that they could stay and teach in France. So that the first, also the pioneers that are French, they came here to have the information to go deep, to meet the sources, the, the, the pioneers here. So when they were inventing France, they also invite them to France so that many people can access them and talk to them and exchange with them. So, and I'm really talking about the community now. So there are many layers to this. Uh, when you say that, you're talking about pioneers that have many years of experience. Um, and now they teaching, they teaching in the US maybe, but they're also teaching abroad. But they also learning how to teach by being called to teach. Because hip hop has as many courant ways as there are dancers in the culture. So there is no one way to do it, but there are still basics and like common agreement on some techniques basics because we want also to build something that is reconnaissable, <laughs> you know, that you can understand, that you can recognize and say, oh, I've seen this aesthetic, I've seen this technique, in, and can even compare it. Dancers say, oh, I think he's better because, you know, his form or his technique, you know, we want also this to happen, but we also have this um, importance that in hip hop, identity is really important, as in your disability, your body, your flexibility or not, whatever, is part of you. And we are really thought early to be looking in this area of what is your component as a human being, as a mover. So this is where every dancer could be a school, you know? an entire way of approaching dance. But what I like in this culture, in this identity, at this, in these representations, as in like build your own confidence through your own body movement, language, sensations, is how you can build your own knowledge and methodology as we, sp as we spoke earlier, and the tools that can be important to share with other people so that can, they can do the same thing, not my thing. Go through my tools that I can try to create, to make universal so that they can catch something to be able to develop their own tools. You know, this kind of mindset more than you have to move your body like I just taught you, you know. So for me, this is, this is also where I completely understand from having a lot of influence from America, I understand how it can, it's, it's still a struggle here that go back to racial um, questions. And also growing up in France where the race is completely different, you know? We talked about it yesterday. Um, in France, the community can be only the hood or being Muslim. It doesn't always have to do with the color of your skin because you can be Senegalese, from Mali, uh, Mali from Cameroon, from Ghana. It's really 
different in France, which in United States sometimes it's not that different. Being black is being a community. And I completely respect and understand that. But in France, this is different. So my traditional dances, and we all understand that, that in, in Africa there are so many roots and we get this. But in France, like my parents came from Ghana, not my great, 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 great parents. So my house was different from my neighbor that was from Mali and from, because our parents that come from Africa were here in France. They are the reason why I grew up in France. It's really different than trying to go back to your roots when you grew up in America and your parents were born here and your great parents were born here and then you have to go back, 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 back. So the community is different because of also these kind of questions. So for me, it's not only the question of race that brings all this maybe misunderstanding or misrepresentations. It's, it, it can be many different crossing ideas that stop the exchange or not making, creating space where those questions can be developed. So I want to say that because um, I feel like we also have our own responsibility to say, and you said earlier, and Tatiana said it, even if we don't have access like academic uh, um, access to what we want to develop as a, an artist, we're still doing it because this is culture. This is hip hop. You do it. You don't. Uh, you don't wait for it. this beautiful studio. This beautiful whatever. You need to do it. You need to do it. That's maybe one of the differences. Is it's a necessity, and this is what for us is driving any creativity, any expression, any research to work, exchange, talk with someone, eat with someone because it's cultural. So for me, the, this necessity, it's our responsibility to put in front of the door, which means if I'm called to say, we want you to do this, I'm gonna ask why you want me to do this. Do you want someone from hip hop or do you want Linda Heffer to do this? What do you know about my work? Now I have this kind of reflection. When I was younger, of course not. We we're just happy to do something that it was in a place where other people could see it. But if I would, if, if, if at that time I would be asked, how, how, why do you move like this? I would not be that clear. I had to, talk, to teach myself. So I had to, through my practice, understand what I was doing, trying to understand it and lock it, and then find my own words to say it also, because this is our responsibility to not be defined by the other people and not to, to, uh, to, and to be okay with what is going to be out talking about your craft, your work, your artistry. So for me, it's also something that we have, and we are doing it. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm saying that to be conscious that we are the one who will be saying what we are doing. We have to be clear with this so that people can access it and say, okay, I didn't know that exists, but I want you to be there because what you were saying, like, I understand, I want to meet you in what you're defending so that it also clarify why people are contacted to work with or to be there in a certain, split, certain places, you know? So I said that because I've also also had the experience where people were wanted to work with me because I was a black female representing hip hop. And sorry, but I also don't want to be that. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, I'm that because I love it. I am myself. I am what I love in hip hop and dance, but I don't want you to make me only this because Thanks to all of this, I'm trying to create something that 
resembles all my other influences that doesn't necessarily come from hip hop or even dance. And this is me being a human and putting my humanity in my craft. So you also have to give me space, but I need to be clear when I say that to other people also. So it's not just being rebel, saying, I don't want to be this, but I don't want to be this because I'm actually working on this and this come from this and I can like share with you other things that you might not like and it's okay, but you can still understand the most honest part of my work. And to me, this is where necessity is filled with honesty and that is what you share with the world and people can access to this or not they want to see it or not but i think this is also what can bring hip hop culture to the level of valued expertise that exists in other any art form it's not about ballet contemporary dance is art form which means we can have the same discussion with any people that do any kind of art if we all, each and every one of us built our own expertise, um, being precise on what we are looking at, on how you practice, how you worked on something and be like knowing that if you see a ballet piece, even if you cannot do it, like right now you could not, you could not do the same movement, but you can read it, you can read how someone is nourishing the movement, how someone is fundamental and really good in its technique, aligned or not, we can read it because we have built our own consciousness about body function. This is really important and I really liked what you said because for me, the science of how your body function is also, it's like, to me, all those questions are not to be answered as in, I also have to be an expert in science. It's more, what do I need in science to like, take my own practice to another level? So I need to know how my body functions, to know what my possibilities are from what I want to do with my dance. So I also can create my own workouts to what I want to, how I want to use my body for my dance. It's not just, I know all the, how all the body functions. Okay. <laughs> but what does it do to my dance? Because I'm someone who maybe goes always on the floor. Do I need to know that, how to jump? I don't know, but you know, how you, you, you pick, not pick as in like, you know, just go over, just you pick something, but you go deep into this because you want to, to have the same depth in different questions in your practice. So for me, thinking this mindset, I'm, I'm going back to this mindset, is how you can bring this accessibility, this acknowledgement of what are the components of hip hop culture is in maybe other discussion that we can have in any conversation, for me. This is what I'm trying to go to. And I understand that it's, you cannot bring people to understand 50 years of culture, of course not. I mean, we can try, of course we say, come with us with the, at the club, of course, yes, why not? I mean, but you can't, and it's okay. And I, it, like, even if I say, like, I grew up in my apartment like this, I wasn't in America. Like, when I go out here, I see everyone just putting music so loud in the street. Like, I'm, I'm in Harlem. I love this street. So I'm like, I, like, I love Harlem. So, like, people just go on and put some music. In France, it's not like this. We have fees if you put music like this loud. In the, like, it's not, you're not free to do whatever, you know. So... This here is lifestyle that even people that I can see walking around with music loud like this, they're not dancers. They don't care about your craft. They don't care about going to practice and understanding your body and artist. They, they just live like this. So you cannot bring any, everyone to understand how deep a culture is in any cultures. And 
We're all mixed in every ways. So I cannot teach you how in Ghana it's done. I can introduce you to it. You will never be living like a Ghanaian. Even I can't because I grew up in France. So we also have to be like, it's okay not to, um, to know all these parts. It's okay that you have questions and let's have questions. And also to say that I don't, I don't master contemporary and ballet questions either. So it's okay that we just meet and question each other and try to go to, like to find spaces where we resonate that can lift everyone up more than saying, you don't know what I do, I don't know what you do, you don't understand that, and I don't understand that, and why is it, like, expertise for me can be a, a question of, like, centered question, where you can look at someone and say, you know your thing, you know, and that's amazing, and so we here, knowing what we know, and contribute to something maybe bigger, or wider, or deeper, I don't know, yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, there's a question. <laughs> Thank you both um, for uh, what you shared. I just um, feel the need to add to what you're saying uh, because I feel the problem is to meet my perspective deeper, um, a little deeper, the complexity of it because I do feel it has everything to do with race, unfortunately, when it comes to these um, problems of recognizing each other. Um, that's, that comes from a power system that's already put in place, already not allowing people to know how to uh, be open to others, know how to read others, uh, different cultures. Uh, it was set to recognize only certain forms in general. Um, and until we are acknowledging that, that thing that we have to deconstruct from within to understand that, okay, we don't have the tool to actually be able to receive those. And, and the, the specific reason for it is that power system um, that is in place. And that's why we talk about systemic racism, uh, which actually feeding us a certain way to perceive the other certain way, which create that endless oppression um, in life, but also within the art. Um, until we do that, I feel like the, the, this conversation will be endless uh, because I believe in everything that you said, you know, to the core. The thing is, I feel like before to even get to that, um, <laughs> to, to get to that reality of just having a regular conversation and recognize me the same way I recognize you, um, it would take for the oppressor to be able to see that they are actually oppressing and they're not able to see because of that um, internalized, I will say, bias that, that is within, you know, that, and that, it, that has been put to all of us, uh, unfortunately. So for me, it feels like um, education, yes, we always say education is key, but the, the educating ourselves in um, <clears throat> recognizing that Yes, we don't. We actually don't know other cultures. We are around it constantly. We see it, but actually, you don't know me. I don't know you. <laughs> you know, having having that space, that you know, humbleness to say, I don't know. You don't know anything about me. Um, uh, you don't know about my culture and whatever you know uh, in your structure and that is recognized as the elite forms uh, is not able to read. Um, to read others in a, in an equal way, if that's the right way to say. I'm not sure if I'm clear with that. So it just, it takes that. It's like, I feel like um, my question, I mean, in general, is like, how do we find ways and space to rewire it ourselves in general? Um, and 
we talking about 50 years of hip hop, but to me, hip hop didn't start 50 years ago for sure. Uh, when we think about hip hop, you think about it starting, the starting point was slavery. And to think about that lineage that, that led to the most contemporary form that black people created in the United States, which is hip hop and so on, and it's continuing. It's just to understand that being here, people recreated their Africanism here. Basically, it's old traditions that, that has been recreated here. Uh, like you were talking about different, uh, we talk, we thinking, we can think about different tribes having different dance styles and stuff, and it's the same within the states, but it's not seen, but it's it's there, it's happening. Like for me, literally, I go to different states, I see different tribes and different ways of um, uh, talking through their art, um, but it's so it's there. It's the root of the United States culture. Culture is rooted within that, that Africanism that has been recreated, but yet is not seen. So the reason why it's not seen, but it's so present, it's there all the time. You know, the way people talk, the way they dress, the commercials is there, the sound, everything is there. It's, it's not seen. That shows that the problem comes from that systemic racism that is putting in place that doesn't allow people to see unless you actively decide to deconstruct it. Um, and then we can meet each other halfway then. Only then. Um, but until then, I feel like it's a, it doesn't seem real. It feels like it's an endless conversation. This conversation I'm having, I have, I have, people have had it before me and it's continuous and I feel like repeating this thing is like, well, the, the, let's just talk about the real problem. And yes, it has everything to do with race, unfortunately. Worldwide. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is why I was saying that I, not, I was not, I didn't grow up here, so I don't, I know some stuff, you know, of course, we all know some, some, some things, but to live here and to be facing all this um, uh, walls and stuff, for me, it's different. I, I don't know how it is here to be daily trying to develop an artist, uh, something artistic here. But um, to go back to my first thought when I started, it was the questioning is how come hip hop culture that has spread that much was now, like, for example, in France, now you can have a career, you can project yourself as being an author and which in United States, I don't know, it's a question asked. I'm not saying that I know that it's not happening, but I I don't, uh, I'm not surrounded or I don't know dancers that have this much experience uh, being New York, uh, like United, like USA dancer that have been recognized as an author uh, you know, more than being working with the best singers or best musical or whatever, but to, to be like signing a piece, many pieces, many things. I don't know them. I met one of them yesterday, Camille A. Brown, but I, I, I don't know her, but I've met so many amazing dancers, different generations from the United States. So I had this question, in my mind where you come to France, you see hip hop companies that are led by hip hop dancers that never learned dance in any schools, but they're choreographers like I am now. And I've been inviting into academy to give workshops for what I was actually doing and not just being giving like hip hop classes, whatever you, you want, but from the craft that I made and to me, this kind of approach and partnership or connection is really important and it exists in France. But my question is, does it exist, happen in the United States? And Tatiana uh, told us that not really and not at all. <laughs> so for me, it's just opening this conversation, but I will never be able to say that it's the only thing that is a frein, like um, yeah, a break to our development. 
generally, maybe here, I really understand because it's huge and it comes from here, so it's deep, of course. But I, I can't say that there are no other reasons that are not just racial, you know? And that, as we always do, to find ways, but I, it's completely, it's, it's, it's a bit complicated to say that because I don't have the, like, your reality here, but. We, ay, ay, ay. Raphael, uh, last, and then I have a, I have a question. Have you ever danced together? What, like, this so, is kind of... So if you dance now, would it be the first time? No, like, this is the thing. You, you mean dance as work on stage or just dance? dance Because just dance. dancing, like, oh, just no. dance. But, yeah, yes? Been, ah, okay. And uh, the second question, do you need music to dance, to improvise <laughs> now? Should we dance? Yes. <laughs> Who said that? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? Maybe you did. I think I think it's really nice to do that, but I think we're also not warmed up at all. So you know, also this thing of hip hop dancer, let's go. We're over 30, We need eight hours sleep. So just to have a career, we need to be like okay. If if we need to dance. I said, we said that it might happen if, it, if it's something that it's building up, but also to be okay that we're not just ex all the time explosive. Movement have meaning, connection has moments, like all, it's, it's something also. It's not just, we like music and we dance. Or we can have that, but you will have 1% of whatever we feel like, <laughs> you know? Yes, I think this is a point for us to, to pause, um, just to make sure that everyone has time uh, to get some food. Thank you so much, Linda and Alain, so for your talk.